Y'all already know what it is, Jay Williams, Let's Live Life, and we're back. So I made a video yesterday. Edited the video. Spent all this time on it. But talking on the subject I had yesterday just made me so uncomfortable. And it was such a messed up series of stories that I put in the video yesterday. That I didn't even post it. You know, one of the stories involved a man blacking out that used to work with my dad. Us seeing him on America's Most Wanted. I was a little kid. Him breaking into a house and completely blacked out drunk. He ended up taking the life of this old woman in a very gruesome way. The second story was of a guy that was a friend of my dad's that ended up getting busted by all these different task force for drugs, sent to prison. His wife met a new man and the new man took my dad's friend's seven year old daughter into the woods, violated her and attempt to cover his crime by setting this tree house that we had back in the woods. It was like a little log cabin. These other kids had built he set it on fire in hopes of covering up all the evidence and making her disappear. After I told these two stories, he also used the defense that he had been messed up on drugs and blacked out. After I told those stories, I was literally sick to my stomach because I hadn't thought about these things since I was a kid. So I decided not to put the videos up, man. It, it bothered me so much that I left work early. Went home, picked my family up, went to Cobblestone, which is a water park not far from Richmond. It's got water slides and areas for the kids. And I decided to spend some hours with the family at the water park with my little boy in the water, watching him go down slides and, you know, teaching him to swim. Yesterday's story was just, it, it was too much for me to relive. And I definitely you know, knew it was going to hit home to a lot of people. So I know people want to hear that. And I know if I was to ask, do y'all want me to post a story, put the video up, everybody would say yes. But it's debatable on whether I'm going to put yesterday's video up or not. But let's get into the purpose of why we're here today. Today, we're going to talk about what people call Uncle Tom's. Inmates. Guys that just get a little too friendly with the police. Guys that start to think they are the police. Guys that walk around telling you what the police want you to do. And how I've seen this go bad. <laughs> there are a lot of police ass people locked up. That in another life. Or if they hadn't caught those felonies that sent them to prison. They would have made good prison guards. And not good ones but. They would have that would have been their calling. They just so happened to end up getting locked up for something and never got to get into a situation to be the police. So without further ado, we could talk about these inmate police. <laughs> and what I've seen happen with dudes that get out of pocket and start doing stuff they shouldn't do. Y'all know I'd have seen it. I know I'd have lived it. So let's relive it. So with these dudes, man, there are some exceptions to them. And let me break this down to you. If you find yourself working a job where you're surrounded by the guards all day long, you're going to have to deal with them. Doesn't mean you boss other inmates around, other convicts around as if you are one of them. You just do what's asked of you. A lot of jobs require you to work around Correctional officers, guards, turnkeys, whatever you want to call them. There's a lot of jobs that's going to put you in a position to where you have to be around the guards. These are highly sought after jobs. Master control, where all the shots are called. Getting a job over there, mopping the floors, cleaning up over there. That's a good job because you get to hear things that other people don't hear. You get warned about things that other people don't get warned about and you're able to come back and possibly save everybody else from what's coming. <laughs> Even working in the chow hall, 
there's times you're going to have to work around guards. They're going to be there. They're going to be watching to see if you're stealing anything. My child's being served. They're going to make sure nobody's beating the deuce. And I'm introducing beating the deuce to y'all. Y'all might have heard that saying before. Beating the deuce is the act of stealing a second tray. If you just slid underneath the rail when the guard wasn't looking, went through and grabbed another tray and he didn't notice you, you just did what's called beat the deuce. You can work in an office section of the prison. You can be an assistant. There's a lot of different things you can do that are going to put you around people other than typical inmates or convicts. But like I told y'all, just because you work around the police doesn't mean you're the police. People will try and start to adapt and start to take on this, these characteristics that make them identify like they got some type of authority because of who they work with. Don't let that happen. Do your job. Go back to your building. Lock it down. Get what you can get out the hustle. Learn what you can learn. Take in what you can take in. And then take your ass back in the cell. Don't be over there trying to be the world's best inmate, this or that. Nothing wrong with being good at your job, but don't be over there talking about what's going on or he he and ha ha and with this dude all day like y'all friends because he will lock your ass up at the drop of a dime. You might get away with more because y'all built some type of repertoire, but at the same time, his job is to make sure things run smoothly. And please believe that if you fall on his bad side, he'll lock your ass up just like he'll lock me up. First person of the day story I got to tell y'all about, and I'll never forget this dude, man. I can't forget him because I despised him. I didn't like him. Mo. Mo. We'll just say Mo Bolotti. Got Mo head and he got body. Mo had a big ass head. Mo looked like somebody put a bicycle pump in his ear and pumped in about 20 pounds of pressure and his head swelled up like a cabbage patch doll. I don't know if Mo was born with fluid on his head when he was a baby, if he was half alien if his daddy was a Rottweiler, I don't know what it was, but Mo had just a big Mr. Potato Head ass looking dude, right? Skinny, regular body, nothing athletic about him, but he had this just, I mean, this bobblehead on his shoulders. Mo gets this job working out in the pod. So when we would all lock down, Mo would be out there wiping down tables. He'd be wiping down the phones, cleaning the microwave, Filling up the hot pot. He'd even go as far as cleaning the showers, and that ain't even his damn job. Well, in doing this, Mo would spend a, spend a lot of time at the control booth. He would go up there. He didn't care what guard it was, if it was a female, if it was a man. He didn't care. He would be up at that chuck hole just talking. Hey, what's up, man? What, what you doing? Da, 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 da. Building friendships with these guards. At first, we all see it. Mo came in after me. Got this little job and his head got bigger than it already was. Old balloon head ass dude. His head really starts to get big when he starts to feel like he's built some type of friendship with these guards. Now dudes are falling back from him. Can't trust the man that's always in the in the guard's face all day. That's a no-no. At least where I'm at. If you're talking to the police all day, you up there in that guard's face all day, I don't want you to know nothing about what's going on with me so it can slip out in your conversation or you can try to get some brownie points by bringing some heat down on me. Stay away from me. And that's how that, you know, most people treated Mo, except for the other dudes that were similar to Mo in the way Mo acted, right? Mo gets carried away with this stuff. And when I'm telling you he gets carried away, it's to the point the first time I saw it, a female officer comes over to intercom and she says, lock down for count. Time to lock down. Lock down for count. Go in your cells. This is the late night count. This is the last count of the night. You go in. You don't come back out until breakfast. Dudes are just still in their conversations. Weekend, we're out late. A couple dudes on the phones. They cut the phones off. Dudes like, damn. Hang up the phones. Irritated because they just click the phone on them in the middle of the conversation. Dudes getting their ice. Dudes trying to throw the last little thing in the microwave before they go in. Collecting their stuff. Dapping up their homeboys. They making their way to their cells. It's going to take a couple minutes. Ain't nobody just running to lock down in no prison cell, right? Then you got Mo out there. Hey, I know y'all heard her. She said everybody locked down. Everybody needs to go in their cells. Who the fuck is Mo talking to? That dude's going on Mo. Mo, you think you the police? 
Let the police do their job. Fuck is you? Try to tell somebody to lock down. Bitch, you need to lock down. Mo goes on about his business. Gets his mop bucket. Start mopping the floor. I guess in Mo's head, he's feeling like since he kicks it with these guards, he's going to help them out. Plus, the quicker we get in the cell, the quicker he gets to get to mopping and doing what he's doing and going back up to the control booth and being all buddy-buddy, right? Dudes wasn't feeling that. Follow day, a couple dudes, especially these older, these life of dudes, tell this dude, look, man, don't ever try to tell me what to do. Don't ever come at me trying on that police shit, trying to do the police's job, man, for real. Like, you should know better, man. Don't ever, ever do that in your life again. I swear to God. Mo, oh, no disrespect, brother, no disrespect. I just ain't want to see us get in trouble because guys ain't locked down. You know, if they don't, we don't lock down, they'll let us out late in the morning. Pulls all this bullshit. Dude's telling him, you heard what we said, man. Like, don't ever tell me what to do again. You're not the police. Next time I see Mo get out of pocket, and a bunch of people seen it, we got a dickhead in the booth. A whole entire human piece of trash. Just human waste. Shouldn't have been a guard. Was far from being a man Had control issues Always just grind me out his mouth gritty Would shut the cell door while you're trying to go in Then you'd be standing there like yo open my cell And he'd just let you stand there for 10 minutes Ignoring you Or you'd be halfway through your door and he'd shut you in the door And these doors when they shut they don't stop This ain't food line The door don't slide back open You get stuck in that door that door's so strong It'll break your damn arm That, that wheel gets to turn with that chain on it And the damn chain rotates that metal door your body's not going to stop that metal gear. This guard would do things like this, right? We're all out there waiting to go by, go get wrecked, go outside, lift weights, go to wreck. I go up to the ice machine. As I'm heading to the ice machine, I'm going to get me a cup of ice and take outside. We put some water in because it's going to be hot outside. It's summertime. I see Mo, and Mo's got a, a soda bottle. And Mo is forcing these cubes of ice down inside the soda bottle. He's got a latex glove on. And then he goes and fills it up with water. I said, where the hell Mo get a soda bottle? They sell soda cans. They don't sell no soda bottles where I'm at, right? Ain't gonna happen. Dudes are just use them to, you know, do whatever. Dudes are gonna make wine in them. You don't, you know, they're not selling soda bottles. Mo has got the guard's bottle from the booth the guard gave him and is over there shoving ice cubes inside of it. These long skinny ice cubes, giving his dude something to drink. Oh, ain't no problem, sir. Ain't no problem. Yeah, yeah, man, anything you need, man, you just let Mo know I got you, right? Walk by Mo, fucking clown. You the police, man. Why are you always messing with the police? Like, you should have got a job as a police. Like, is, are you the police? Man, the man's hot in the control booth. Why they got AC in that control booth? You can have another officer bring him something. The man makes our life a living hell. Why are you doing anything to make his life any better? Well, you know, man, they in here just like us. They not in here just like us. They're not. I've been in here for years. I ain't never left. Anything I've ever ate came out of this penitentiary. I ain't been with a woman. I ain't been around my kids except in a visiting room. I ain't been in a car unless I'm getting transported from here to there. And even then, I'm either in a police car or a paddy wagon or a prison bus. We're not the same, Mo. Oh, uh, man, y'all be tripping on the guards, man. They just doing their jobs. Shut up. Don't talk to me ever again, right? This continues to go on. It don't matter who it is. Mo is in there trying to help them. You know, they say there's always that straw that breaks the camel's back. The warden comes walking in one day. He's with the captain. He's with a lieutenant. He's with a sergeant. Now, the lieutenant and the sergeants, they run the building. Now, the captain, he oversees the lieutenants and sergeants. Now, he answers back to the warden. They coming through. Just, you know, you don't see the warden a lot. But when he comes through... Everything stops. Everything you ain't supposed to be doing stops. If you got something covering your window to keep that bright ass, hot ass light from coming in that cell that ain't got no AC, you gonna uncover it real quick because he's gonna make a scene about it. If you got anything in your cell out of place, you're gonna straighten it before that warden comes through because he's gonna stop at your cell. And if he stops at your cell, it's a pretty good chance that that sergeant and lieutenant are gonna go in there and tear your shit up, right? No sooner they come in, Mo runs up on them. Mo sitting all the way across the pod. Mo runs up on them like three of his family members, four of his family members just come walking to the pod. How y'all doing? How y'all doing today, guys? How y'all doing, sir? We good, Mo. And they're just walking, doing their rounds, looking to sell. Mo is walking with them. 
If there's anything I can do to help y'all while y'all in here, let me know. Y'all see anything out of the way? Y'all want changed? I'll holler at the guys. If you see anything in the pod you want changed, I'll holler at the guys. So now Mo is going in front of the warden and them, going up to people's cells going, hey, man, go ahead and take that down off the window. Hey, man, you can't have that blanket on your counter like that, man. You got to take that off. Don't worry about it, Sarge. Don't worry about it, LT. Hey, warden, I got it, man. Y'all just continue y'all's conversation. Y'all all right? Dudes are looking at this dude, and they can't react how they want to act at the moment because you got four high-ranking officers in here. That's including the warden. He's no different than an officer. Dudes are looking at Mo now like, I told this dude to fucking leave me alone. If the, guy, if the guards want to say something to him, to me, let them say it. It ain't your place, man. Now you just going to walk up, look in my cell, glance my whole cell, and tell me what's wrong with my cell doing the police's job, right? He's got to know they're going to leave. They're not staying in here forever. Dudes that told you about doing this whole police ass shit that you keep doing. You know there's going to be repercussions, Mo. You know it, right? Everybody leaves out and dudes start coming out their cells. And this ain't one or two dudes. You're talking a lot of guys come out their cell. Pussy this. Bitch this. Faggot this. They call him Mo all types of names. Police ass dude. I knew you was the police. You a fucking snitch. Come over here now and tell me what to do with myself. Come on, Mo. Come over here and say something to me now. Come on. Mo telling the guys, everybody think, calm down. Calm down. Everything's all right with his big swole head ass, right? Everything is not all right. They wait till that night. Mo goes and gets in the shower. And then when they walk through, it must have been, I don't know, man. It was earlier in the day when they come walking through. That night, Mo goes and, and, and gets in the shower. Dude goes to the, the microwave, puts this bleach, this powder bleach we could buy. It was almost like Thai, but dudes in the main laundry would bring us actual bleach so we could clean our whites with it. But it was a powder bleach. Dude takes his powder bleach, heats his stuff up in a cup, pours the water in it, puts it in the microwave, and walks by the shower where Mo's at and throws that fucking hot bleach in, on the, shower, in the shower on Mo. Scald. Mo's ass. Mo comes up out the shower. With, you hear him in the shower screaming. The dude did it so slick and so fast that it took me a minute to realize who had did it because there were so many people on the top tier. The dude didn't even keep the cup. He threw the cup and all right in the shower on Mo. Scald of Mo's ass. You hear Mo, ah, ah, ah. Mo's screaming. Not only does Mo now have burns, Mo has chemical burns. Mo comes out and he is blistered up, lumped up. Some of these Little pus pockets have already formed and popped, and he's got loose skin hanging on him. The guards come in, lock it down, lock it down, lock it down. Mo still ain't left from, from in front of the shower. The shower's right in front of the control booth. I guess now he's scared to walk down the tier because he don't know what somebody else is going to throw on him. You got dudes standing in the doorway. I'm guessing Mo's thinking, man, I'm going to walk down. You got a lot of angry dudes. Like, one of these dudes going to punch me in my face. They might jump me, snatch me into a cell. Like, he knows he's done fucked up, right? The people end up coming in, getting Mo, packing all Mo's stuff up, taking Mo, I guess, to the infirmary, the medical, the hospital. I don't know where the hell Mo went to. They questioned a whole bunch of different guys. Guys are when as soon as Mo got Mo got burned in the showers, they shut all the cell doors. So that left everybody that was outside their cell in the day room on the top tier, on the bottom tier. They questioned all those guys. Bunch of us. I made it back into my cell. Got, got in the bed, turned the light off. I don't want y'all questioning me about nothing, right? Nobody said a word. That's how it's supposed to be. With Mo's situation, he should have known better. The guards, at times, I've done it. Get shit, piss, thrown in their face. I've seen guards get tossed over tears, knocked out cold, choked, bit. You, you name it, I've seen these guards take some 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 brutal punishments, and 99.9% .9 of the time, they deserved it. They had been making it their job to make somebody else's life miserable, and they deserved what they had coming. You can feel how you feel about that comment, unless you were there and you had to deal with the, the, the inhumanity and the, the daily stress of being treated like a dog in a cage, because that's what you start to feel like. When, when the guards are coming through and it's 100 plus degrees in your cell and you got 86 men inside of 43 cells in a pod and people can't breathe 
and they're dying of heat exhaustion and everybody's at the door screaming at the guard, we need some ice, we need something, open the doors, let us out. And you feel like a dog in a cage. It's like when you walk through the pound and you hear all them dogs in cages barking and you smell that fucked up nasty smell from all the dogs pissing and shitting. That's exactly what prison gets like in the summertime when you're locked in them cells. You walk by them and all you smell is musty men. It smells like a, a mixture of sweat, piss, and body odor. Mo didn't fall in the categories as an inmate or a convict. Once he started messing with them police like that, started trying to do that job, he fell in the category of police. Well, I say that Mo got what he deserved. I'm going to say Mo got what he was looking for. Because he had been one, but everybody ain't going to listen, man. They're just not going to listen. Let's get into the next story. Indian Creek Correctional Center. I've spoke on this place. A lot of people that watch me have been there. Other YouTubers in this, I guess y'all call it, it's a prison genre, have done time there as well and spoke on this place. Let me sum Indian Creek up for you briefly. Indian Creek is flooded with young guards. I'm talking guards ranging from 18 years old up until whatever. But there was a lot of young guards. How would you feel as a 40, 50-year-old man has been down a long time having a 20-year-old telling you what to do and poking his chest out when he does it? How would you feel if the majority of the inmate population there was abiding by this program that's supposed to correct the way you think, make you self-evaluate, and tell on other inmates. And they're doing this, they said, because it makes you aware of your negative behavior, right? How would you feel if the same guys that you went to child with, walked the wreck y'all with, and worked out with, turned around and took this little paper called an awareness slip, put your name at the top and said, on such and such date, I observed Jay Williams smoking. On such and such date, I observed Jay Williams tattooing. On such and such date, I observed Jay Williams not attending group, sitting in his bunk area. And now you got to go up in front of every single inmate in that pod with a counselor there and a guard standing there and explain yourself. And then there are repercussions. You could possibly get institutional charges. It's a whole bunch that comes from it. Indian Creek was and still is a place where they send you and you're pretty much set up for failure. Especially when you come from a major, a higher institute. Well, that's a no-no. Telling on somebody, somebody try to cut your head off for of that. But now you've taken a man and dropped him in the middle of all this and be like, hey, it's the program. Just work the program. Don't worry about it. That's exactly what happened. I'm going to show you all a quick, quick video clip of one of these officers and what he's got going on. And when it's done, you tell me how you'd feel while doing your time if you had someone like this guy bossing you around all day. Been inside jail before, but not like this. The 20-year-old correctional officer faces multiple charges, including attempted second-degree murder and shooting into an occupied building. Now, I can't say if dude's innocent. I can't say if dude's guilty. That's going to be determined by the judge. Just goes to show you that what I say is true. A lot of these guards are very young. A lot of these guards are street dudes, street females. A lot of them only got this job because it's the best paying job in the area. A lot of these people get these jobs because it puts them in a position of power, puts them in a position to tell other people what to do. I've met guards up there that were walking amongst guys they went to high school with, walking amongst guys they were friends with, guys they grew up with, and you could see the favoritism. You could see the buddy system. That's the backdrop on Indian Creek. Let me get into this, this dude's story, man. This guy I'm talking about in particular is an inmate. I was at Greensville with him. Big, big white dude. Big. He'd actually beat up a dude I used to rock with. Dude I rock with said, hey, I'm going to go in there and shoot the one-on-one -on -one with him. Y'all don't get involved. It's personal. It's between me and him. 
We can rumble. Man, he smashed dude out. The homeboy went in there. They fought. Dude kicked his ass. Well, this dude shows up. This big white dude shows up where I'm at. These other inmates start writing him up. He ain't going for it. Now, the thing with somebody writing you up is it's done in secrecy. So you don't know who wrote you up. But here's the catch to it. Some of the guys, they got what's called a hierarchy. This is a member of, this is a group of five or six guys that have been put in a position to oversee and police the other inmates, right? They get up there every morning and talk. And these hierarchy guys, some of them ain't really with this program. They're like undercovers. They get up there and pretend that they're doing the program. But what they're really doing is trying to find out who's telling on who. Big dude keeps getting written up. Keeps getting written up. To the point he's getting written up 10, 12 times a day. And this dude is telling people as soon as the guards and the counselors leave out for the day, he lets them know. When I find out who in here keeps snitching on me and telling on me, I'm going to beat your ass, man. I swear for God, I'm going to beat your ass in front of everybody. I don't care who it is. I don't care if you're black, white, you're a gang member, who you are. When I find out who you are, I'm going to beat your ass, right? The guards coming and telling him, you can't be threatening people and you ain't going to do nothing to nobody. I ain't threatening nobody. I ain't said nothing. Well, they said, you said this. The next day he gets rode up for making threats to people, right? Now he's steaming. He's not attending these groups. He don't plan on being here long. They usually let you ride about a week of you not participating before they just lock you up and ship you, right? And when I mean participating, you ain't got to tell them nobody. You ain't got to do nothing. You just got to pull your chair up and just sit there and listen, right? He ain't doing none of that. One of the guys on his hierarchy is a blood dude. Comes to him and tells him, hey, you can't say nothing, man. But I know you're being targeted. I know you're being, you know, picked on and you're being roading up for everything. Dude just keeps writing you up. Yeah, who is it? He tells him. It's a guy that sleeps above you on the top bunk. What? Yeah, it's your bunky. This makes it everybody like the guy don't keep it no secret. He lets it be known in, in, in front of everybody. His bunky works in another part of the prison. His bunky is a teacher's aide over the place called upholstery where they teach you how to do upholstery. His bunky ain't back yet. He's telling everybody, my bunky comes back. I'm going to beat his ass, man. I don't care who sees it, what happens to me. I still got time to do. I'm going to beat this dude's ass for everybody to see. So you know that running around telling shit ain't sweet. Everybody else might let it ride. I know who told on me. I'm going to beat his ass, right? Big dude's in the bathroom. I don't know if he was pissing, shitting, brushing his teeth or whatever. But his bunky comes back in from work. And we're all waiting. We want to see the squabble. Bunky ain't no slouch. We didn't expect it coming from his bunky. His bunky seemed like a solid dude, but I guess deep down inside, he was he was the police, man. He liked the right dudes up. He was feeling this program. He was, you better not do nothing, but he didn't like the big dude that slept below him, so he was just up there taking notes when he ain't looking, writing them up. What'd he do? I'm gonna write that up. What else he do? I'm gonna write that up. You know how aggravating that is? You know how irritating that is when you come from a place where snitching is the number one you do not do? Now you land in a place where you're getting told on upwards of 10 plus times a day. You're getting called up there every day to the police and the sergeant's office in front of the counselors. This dude will tell the counselors and the sergeants, man, fuck them charges. Fuck y'all. Fuck whoever wrote them up. Write that up. No, I'm not getting up there and saying nothing. Y'all do what y'all do. Dude comes in from work. I hear somebody yell out to him, hey, yo, your bunkie's back. Just randomly. Some random dude screamed that out, right? Everybody knew who he was talking to. Dude don't have no clue that he's been put on front street. That his bunkmate knows it's him that's been telling. You the little rat that's been causing this dude all these problems. You the little rat that's been writing all these little awareness forms and all these slips. Causing this man to have all this heat with the police and with the guards, right? Dude goes into his bunk area. Puts his little stuff in his locker. Is going to take off his blue shirt. And as he's pulling over his head, the big dude walks up in the cut and punches him. He still got his shirt halfway over his head and he just hits him. Boom! Grabs him by the shirt, slings him out, because there's only maybe three feet from bunk to bunk. Slings him out from in between the bunks and out into the open area and commences to sitting down on top of him and just beating him until the guards came in and pulled him off of him. He whooped on this dude for 
well over a minute, man. To the point that he had exhausted himself beating him up. To the point that every time he hit him, all he did was damage what was already busted open more and more. So now you got this man laid out on the floor. This big dude on top of him with blood all over him. This dude's just smashed like a like a tomato laying in the floor. Blood all over the floors. And the guards come in. They knew this was coming. They knew that this 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 happens all the time. This wasn't an isolated incident. This type of thing was happening up there on a weekly basis. They handcuffed that big dude, was leading him out the pod. Guards are checking on the other dude that's all busted up laying on the floor. What do you think he said as soon as he gets up? I want to press charges. I want to press charges. I want to press charges. You're going to jail for what you did to me. Put your hands on me. You're going to jail. I swear you're going to jail. Take his ass to court. Where did they do that at? Every fight I ever got into up there, I did my best to be discreet at. And I'm not saying I'm the toughest guy in the world. Don't, I'm not saying I'm no gangster. I'm saying there was a lot of shit I didn't agree with. If I got to argue and I get into it with somebody, I've told y'all a couple stories. But yeah, that's what happens when you start trying to do the police's job. That dude went above and beyond anything that the Institute called for. If you find yourself at Indian Creek, my advice to you is to just shut up, stay quiet, try to get a job outside of that dorm, working over an enterprise, working over in laundry or doing something somewhere else. Try to get outside of that dorm area and out the eyes of the guys that are going to tell on you because that place is filled with just snitch ass inmates. Man. And did do get what he deserved that day? 100%. Were the guards and the counselors at fault for what happened to that dude? 100%. Because they told him to do that. They told him, this is what's required of you while you're here. And he went above and beyond to make them people happy. What well, nothing they could do to save his ass when he had to pay for what he had done to a convict. Him wanting to be an inmate. An inmate being somebody that don't know how to move. Somebody that could have been locked up a long time, but still makes stupid decisions every day. Tries to appease the guards. A convict being somebody that knows how to move, knows what to do or knows what not to do. Couldn't save his ass from that convict. All they could do was mop him up when he was done with him. Facts. Big dude will go on to be charged, malicious wounding, for the day he beat that guy up. And the guards came in and told everybody, Anybody puts their hands on him, says anything to him, does anything to him, we will bury you in the hole. We will run your time up, hit you with new charges, and ship you immediately. Thought I told y'all, it always ends bad. You find yourself locked up. If you have to work around the police, do your job and leave it at that. Don't ever think that y'all are like. Don't ever let them send you on a dummy mission to put your dumb ass in harm's way. You can become that tomato real quick or that man in the shower with that hot ass bleach on his back. Penitentiaries, full of dudes that ain't gonna stand for that. A lot of those guys are in there because somebody told on them. And everybody's gotta deal with the constant pressure and stresses from being locked up and dealing with ignorant guards on a day-to-day -day basis. When you put yourself in that category, it's open season for whatever happens to you. To avoid any of this, ever having to do anything like that, deal with anything like that, stay free. Don't commit crimes. Work a job. Search out another route. Weigh out your options. Think before you act. Anyways, these institutions, jails, detention centers, these prisons, they're all just crazy worlds inside this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching, y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do, man. Salute.